So welcome, this is part two of the story of the O'Briens. Uh, this is a series of films I'm going to show, uh, shoot about the families of the Norman invasion and their history and how they came to be uh, at the start of the Norman invasion in 1169. So hi, I'm Rua Butler and I write novels about the Normans coming to Ireland in the 12th century. Um, Swordland is a great story about the fall of Viking Wexford in 1169 and the original uh, expedition by the Normans to Ireland, while Lord of the Sea Castle and um, the Earl Strongbow talk about the fall of Viking Waterford in 1170 and the coming of Strongbow, or the man we now know as Strongbow, to Ireland. So I'll put a link to them in the uh, description down below. So if you feel compelled, please uh, take a look and uh, hopefully you might fancy taking a read. Cheers. So in the first part of our story about the O'Brien family, we had um, met Kennedy MacLorcan, a chieftain who had risen to the kingship of the Dalcassian tribe in modern County Clare. Uh, his son Mahan, who had become uh, even uh, done even better and become king of Munster before falling in battle in 976, and this left uh, Mahan's younger brother Brian as the head of his uh, sept of the Dalcassians and um, in a rather sticky position. So um, the situation in 976 after the death of Mahan, king of Munster. Uh, was that the, the Limerick Vikings had uh, almost re-established themselves in, uh, as a power base on the River Shannon, uh, while further, the, further to the south, uh, uh, the Oanacta, one of the septs of the Oanacta, uh, led by a man called Malloy, uh, had retaken Cashel and become king of Munster. Um, of course, much like the Dalcassians, there were several septs of the Oanacta who all had to fight over um, the, the kingship of, of Munster. Brian, as I said, he would have found himself in a very sticky situation with the death of his brother Mahan in 976. Uh, he, at the time, was probably in his late 30s, um, being born around 940, uh, six years after his father had become king of the Dal Dalcassians. Um, his father died when Brian was only a boy, really, uh, only around 10, um, at the hands, we presume, of the Limerick Vikings. Um, and we can also imagine that uh, during the 1970s, when he was in his 20s, uh, Brian had helped his brother Mahan become uh, King of Munster, and might even have become, uh, been recognised as the Mahan's Tonishta, the his assigned successor. Um, but needless to say, um, at the time of Mahan's death, he would have uh, needed to cross back to uh, his the Dalcassian homeland across the Shannon, and um, and and fight to uh, uh, you know make sure that he was the, uh, the 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 leader of the Dalcassians and not some member of another sept, who would of course themselves have been interested in re uh, asserting their independence or even putting forward a claim to the kingship of the Dalcassians themselves. Brian at this time was merely Brian MacLorcan. He hadn't yet assumed or been given the epithet that which he would be known uh, for uh, posterity, uh, which is Brian Baru, Brian of the Cattle Tributes. In 977, he launched his own campaign to uh, retake the throne of Munster. Um, his first uh, stop was Viking uh, Limerick, uh, which he defeated and killed uh, Ivor, the king of Limerick of that time. And uh, rather than destroy the city, he turned Limerick into uh, his, his capital. He, he colonized it with his own people. And he turned Limerick into an O'Brien city, and it would be for the next uh, nearly 300 years. This uh, capture of Limerick in 977 obviously sent out uh, waves through the, the political system in Munster. And uh, Malloy, the king of uh, Cashel and king of Munster, I uh, couldn't let that stand, so he had to uh, face Bar uh, Brian in battle. And the two sides met in 978 at a place, I don't think we know where it is, but called B Balilaka. And Brian emerged as the victor in that battle. And Malloy was actually killed. But Brian did something quite odd. He decided he was going to tie Malloy's family to his own, and he married his daughter to Malloy's uh, son, Kian. And Kian would prove to be one of uh, Brian's chief allies during the later wars of his career. Having defeated the King of Munster, the uh, own actor King Malloy, uh, this meant that Brian was now in line to, be, to succeed him as King of, uh, of Munster. 
and he was soon recognised as the, and was inaugurated at Cashel. So Ireland in those days was made up of five provinces, five uh, kingdoms, um, each of which had uh, you know as maybe as twenty or thirty or forty uh, petty kingdoms beneath the provincial kings. Brian, as we know, was king of Munster, uh, with its seat at Cashel on the River Shore in County Tipperary, modern County Tipperary, um, and it was the most southern of the five kingdoms of Ireland in those days. Um, on the same side of the of the River Shannon and uh, uh, north of um, of Munster was the kingdom of Connacht, and um, there we had had generations of um, uh, kings of Connacht from the O'Brien and O'Fikra. Families uh, who had ruled uh, over, you know, modern Mayo, Galway, Roscommon, Sligo, uh, Leitrim, since the uh, at least the sixth century. Um, and one of the growing uh, lineages in Connacht at that time were the O'Connors, and they were very much a family on the make at the time. Uh, to the absolute north of uh, of Ireland was one of the the great kingdoms of Ireland. It was Ulster. Uh, virtually cut off from the rest of Ireland by mountains and bogland um, around sort of the, the, the uh, Cavan uh, uh, Monaghan region. Um, they were ruled by the O'Neill of Eilich or the O'Neill of the, uh, the Northern O'Neill uh, who had uh, numerous times throughout the, the, the centuries before Brian's rise had been uh, been recognised as kings of Tara, um, what we'll call the High King of Ireland, just for ease, um, and uh, they had been amongst the most powerful uh, kings in Ireland. To the south of Ulster, on the east coast, uh, was Meath, this royal county of Meath, this kingdom of Meath, I should say, uh, modern West Meath, Meath, uh, Louth, uh, that sort of direction. Um, and it was basically found between Sleeve Gullion, uh, just uh, near Newry, modern Newry, and then south to the River Liffey. And uh, the uh, Meath had been ruled by a, a separate family before uh, the O'Neills had invaded and put one of the branches of their family, uh, who we'll call the Southern O'Neill, into power. And by the time of Brian Baru, they were led by Clan Coleman and uh, had the, 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 the chief settlement and, and the, the, the really the most important uh, place in all of Ireland was in the Kingdom of Meath and that was Tara, the Hill of Tara. Uh, Leinster was the last kingdom on the southeast of the island. Um, it, it was south of the Liffey, uh, modern province of uh, Leinster takes up Meath as well, but this was simply the land south of the, of the Liffey, uh, Wicklow, Kilkenny, Carlow, Wexford, uh, Kildare, and uh, the, the ruling clan of the day were the Dunlana, uh, Lena, Dunlana, and they were uh, sort of based around Kildare and northern Wicklow. Uh, they had had three major septs, the O'Feelans in, in Kildare, um, the uh, O'Donica in uh, sort of uh, on the approaches towards Dublin, the Liffey Valley, and then the, o the family that would later become the, o the, uh, the O'Tools, who were in the uh, Wicklow Mountains. And therefore, as King of Munster in 978, Brian had entered a new level of competition where either really the rules were you were either ruled or you were and paid tribute and gave hostages and to the other kings. And really, how long could you possibly hope to, to last uh, at the top on, on the throne if you were doing all that? Well, as I say, you either ruled or you were ruler, and then you forced other kings to, to give homage to you. And of course, that put you in the position that where you would be approaching, um, you know, be recognised as the King of Tara, and as I say, we're going to call that the High King of Ireland, just for simple, simple reasons, for the simple ease of it. And so this this competition that Brian had entered in upon uh, in 978 by becoming King of Munster, and really for the next 20 years uh, after defeating Malloy, um, th that would become Brian's life, of, you know, campaigning and and trying to force the uh, the submission of other kings, uh, provincial kings. Uh, in the various kingdoms around, whilst maintaining his own hold over Munster and the Dalcassians. Um, it was a, really, it was a, a one long war of, of winning and losing and of success and survival. So in 984, uh, Brian bought the, another Viking city, Waterford, uh, under his control. Um, 
and he may have even helped uh, Ivor, the King of Waterford, not the same as Ivor of Limerick, who is now dead, but the Ivor of Waterford become King of Dublin uh, in 989. Um, by this time there were really two men vying for the High Kingship in Ireland. There was uh, Malshachnall of Meath, uh, uh, one of the Southern O'Neill, who had held the High Kingships for or the High Kingship for quite some time, centuries, and Brian himself. And around uh, 996, Brian and Malshachnall became sort of had reached an agreement, an accord, whereby uh, Brian had taken the southern half of Ireland, Munster, Leinster, Viking Waterford and, and Dublin, and Masyok Neil had Meath, Ulster and, uh, and Connacht were his authority and they actually swapped uh, hostages to, to make sure that that was uh, able to happen and that they could, uh, their power would be respected in those places. Um, and that was good for two years. But then in 998, uh, the King of Leinster, uh, Malmorda, who was I think of the Ophelan clan, uh, he decided that he did not wish to be under Brian's uh, kingship any uh, anymore. And he rebelled in alliance with his nephew, who was the new King of Dublin, uh, a chap called Citric Silkbeard. And of course, Brian couldn't allow this to stand. So in 999, uh, Brian invaded uh, Leinster with an army and he met Citric and Malmorda at the Battle of Glenmama in uh, County Kildare and uh, in this fight an interesting thing we find is that Malshachmiel of uh, Meath, his rival for the High Kingship, is at Brian's side and together they were an unstoppable force and of course they destroyed Malmorda and uh, Citric Silkbeard's army and uh, Brian followed up the victory by sacking Dublin and expelling Citric Silkbeard from the city, this very uh, prestigious city of, of, of great commercial wealth. So by 999, Brian was without equal in Leinster and Munster. Uh, he'd uh, defeated Malmorda of Leinster, his greatest uh, enemy, and he had uh, set up a new King of Leinster. Uh, he'd also invited Citric Silkbeard back to Dublin and had married his mother and Citric had married his sister. So that was a unified force there, they, had, they had entered into an alliance. Um, Malshock Neil on the other hand uh, had had a series of reverses over the, the, the subsequent years. Um, as he tried to establish his authority over the Northern O'Neill, the men of Ulster. And unfortunately this led to Brian being able to walk into the um, to Connacht and capture and take hostages from Connacht and basically force uh, Malshock Neil from the High Kingship in 1002. So now we have Brian as the overlord of four provinces of Ireland. Only Ulster lay uh, outside his control and we're now sitting in one of the centres of O'Neill power in, um, in Ulster and he found this a very hard nut to crack but he wasn't to be uh, wowed by anything <laughs> like that and for the next uh, best part of a decade he campaigned in Ulster defeating all the little kings that, um, that took up the state and finally in 1011 he was acknowledged as Imperator Scotorum, the Emperor of the Irish. He was High King of Ireland in name and that was 1011. And you would have thought that from there it would be easy, easy pickings for Brian but unfortunately not. His rise to power had made a series of powerful enemies and one was Malmorda of Leinster who had um, returned to power in 1003 or been permitted to return to power in Leinster in 1003 and in 1012 his grudging acknowledgement of Brian's power came to an end and he rose in rebellion again and again he enlisted his his uh, sister's son Citric Silkbeard of Dublin to help him. So uh, at the start of 1014 Brian marched on Dublin to put out this rebellion. Um, Citric Silkbeard had not wasted his time in between and had travelled around the Norse Gaelic world enlisting help to uh, come to assist him against Brian Brew. And um, I mean you, this is uh, at the time it was a Good Friday 1014 it's the Battle of Clontarf and we sort of remember it as a time when Brian Brew 
chucked the Vikings out of uh, out of Ireland. Of course, it was nothing such a, uh, nothing like that. Brian probably had Vikings in his own army from Limerick and Waterford, possibly from Cork too. And certainly the uh, Malmorda had enlisted help from Viking Dublin and Viking Orkney and Viking Man to come and fight Brian. So there was uh, we were seeing a, a mesh of these people of different genealogical backgrounds, but still fighting on, e on each other's sides. Um, Brian's army was commanded uh, by his son, his Tonishta Murcha, and uh, what he sort of hung back, he was now in his 70s, late 70s, and no need to prove himself anymore, he'd proven himself enough. And fortunately, although it was an extremely bloody day, um, Brian's army emerged victorious, and Malmorda fell in battle. Um, unfortunately, Brian's son, Murcha, was killed in the fighting alongside his own son, Brian's grandson, uh, Turlock. And just at the end of the battle, um, we're told that Brian was praying in, a, in his tent, or certainly praying, possibly in a, in, a, in a church. And he was killed by uh, the Viking leader, Brodier, who was one of the Orkney leaders. Uh, and Brian and he fought, and Brian lost. But and both men eventually died of their wounds with Brian being taken north to St. Patrick's Cathedral in Armagh, where he is repeatedly buried. Um, what to say about Brian's death? Brian was without equal in Ireland, and obviously when someone like that passes away, it sends shudders through the political system. Life in Dublin was very different after the defeat at the Battle of Clontarf. Uh, before the battle, they were almost acting as if they were a uh, sixth province of Ireland, this kind of small but very wealthy uh, power base. Um, following Frontarf, they would never act in that way at all uh, again, never independently. They would always be uh, forced to submit to one of the great kings of Ireland um, in their ongoing battle for supremacy. Um, the uh, it, it really what happened was factional infighting became the norm in Dublin uh, after they still operated as a fairly powerful uh, economic uh, base but uh, yeah the factional infighting really came to the fore as well. Uh, Citrix dynasty actually fell, Citrix Silkbeard this is his dynasty managed to last, he was re remained as king after Clontarf but his, his dynasty lost a lot of power and um, prestige and fell away after a couple of generations. Leinster too suffered uh, in the aftermath of Clontarf. Um, Malmorda, the King of Leinster, had was one of the major casualties of the day of fighting. And oh, again, as with all, when uh, all the, the uh, kingdoms of Ireland, when a, when a king fell, it, it fell to uh, it meant that all the brothers and cousins uh, waded into the battle to see if they could be recognised as the uh, as a king of their tribe and then of the, the province. Um, Malmorda's tribe, the old Dunlany, uh, actually they, they, they fought over the, the kingship once again. There were three main septs of the family uh, based in sort of the northern uh, uh, Kildare, Dublin, County Dublin and then the Wicklow Mountains and they seem to have fought over the, uh, the, the kingship of their own tribe and of Leinster and although they held on to the kingship of Leinster for a, a couple of more generations uh, they had they were very much weakened and by 1040 they were being overtaken by the hitherto sort of um, uh, minor tribe the Okinsla who were from County Wexford and so the uh, the, the tribe the Undalena who had held on to the kingship of Leinster since at least the 8th century uh, fell away uh, and brought about the rise of the Okinsla. The Okinsla had to that point been a, a relatively small tribe they had held the, the kingship of Leinster on a couple of occasions but were relatively small, but they would become preeminent in Leinster because of Malmorda's actions in 1014. And one of their number was Dermot McMurrah, Dermot of the Foreigners, who would be so important to the later history of Ireland. The great winner from the, in the short term anyway, from the Battle of uh, Clontarf was Malshocknail of Meath, who was able to reclaim the High Kingship in 1014. And uh, really, he held the title with opposition um, of other kings who were of equal ambition to his own. And Brian Baru would actually be the last king for 
at least a century and a half to be able to hold the High King without opposition. Every subsequent High King or person who claimed to be High King would have rivals for that, uh, for that position and role and it would mean an almost constant war for at every level from the high kingship to the provincial kings to the uh, local level um so you can see understand how it changed everything um in ireland this this death of this great king brian brew um the death of his own son mercha his his uh, his heir the man who would have succeeded him and his grandson Turlock through even through the O'Brien family into um, turmoil. Um, his old enemies, or the, his, the Dalcassians' old enemies, the Oanachta, uh, tried to reassert their uh, control over Munster as in the fallout uh, to, to re-establish their traditional hegemony over, over Munster. And um, this was possible as the uh, Brian's remaining sons uh, would fight each other to try and maintain or try and retake the, the leadership of the Dalcassians. But uh, in this fight they would, they and their, their, their people who followed them would have a new surname, a new name under which they would be known due to the greatness of their father and they would now become the O'Briens. And it's about the later O'Briens of the Middle Ages that we'll, not, we'll uh, turn our eye in the next video. So stay tuned for that. Hi guys, just another appeal for uh, you to like, share and subscribe this uh, video to, um, to this channel and to take a look in the description for my three books. Uh, they're really good and really exciting and tells the story of a really important time in Irish history. So uh, I'll see you at the start of the next video. Cheerio!